Hey, I wanted to share something that just really blessed me this morning that I read um, from our sister Colleen, uh, Be Still and No channel. Um, for those of you who don't know her, um, it just really blessed me because it just shows how beautiful our uh, sonship, you know, our relationship with the Lord and fellowship and friendship and just through the Spirit um being one in Christ together with him and the inheritance that we have today that we can enjoy today um is just so special and just so uh and I know I keep using this word but it's beautiful it really is um there's no other kind of fellowship like there is in Christ because we all can share as one with him in it. Does that make sense? <laughs> um, but this just really blessed me. So I'm going to go ahead and read it. And yeah, I might throw in some, uh, my own commentary here too, because it kind of reminds me of just some, uh, things that are, examples of what of how people want to uh make the christian life out to be and they're kind of like concepts that i can explain a little bit better uh through examples if that makes sense okay here we go uh, isn't it amazing how reading and hearing scripture with the truth of gospel in mind changes everything absolutely Suddenly, those words are spirit and they are life. Amen. And they refresh and renew you. They wash over your soul so beautifully. Amen. Well said, says. That's the difference between reading the word according to the letter, demands on you, and according to the spirit, Christ's finished work. Now, just believe and receive it. Amen. If you read the Bible and begin to feel like there is something you need to do or need to be doing better because you were falling or excuse me, failing miserably short, falling miserably short, you're reading according to the letter. The spirit bears witness to our death with Christ. No demands on a dead person. Amen. And our being risen to new life in him where he is our life, righteousness, sanctification, wisdom, and reward. And I'll add in satisfaction as well. Um, and since he is perfect in every way, and we are joined one with him and imputed his righteousness, we just enjoy our positions as sons and heirs. We are truly blessed beyond measure. Amen. Um, now, when she talks about you know the spirit bears witness uh, to our uh, to our death with Christ, no demands on a dead person. When I was reading that, the first thing that I thought of of how to describe this is like um, I don't know if anybody's ever seen the Mummy. Um, it's one of my favorite movies, uh, and the three, one, two, and three. Um, but one was my favorite because it, this is a perfect example of how the institutional church teaching tries to rise up the flesh, you know, with, and of course, you know, in the movie they use new incantations of, of, of bringing the dead to life. Um, but it was all through, you know, self-effort and, um, I kind of equate this with how the institutional church is trying to constantly put a burden on us and trying to wake up our flesh to do the work that Christ had already done and how um, each time it gets worse and worse. <laughs> and even though you're, you know, walking around, you're still dead, <laughs> you know. Um, it, it's, it's like trying to... Um, put a live heart back into a dead body it it doesn't work okay um 
or a uh, dead battery into a, you know, a remote control, um, it's still dead. <laughs> it doesn't come back to life. <laughs> and I know those are stupid examples, but you get my point. Hopefully. Um, you can't raise the dead. Okay. Only Christ can do that. And he only did that through his spirit that we have in us as him being the person of, you know, um, of God manifesting through Christ in us, through his spirit, his life giving spirit. He is the one that gives life to the dead. Okay. We don't, we can't, and we never will. And, um, so a lot of the, uh, pulpit puppets love to throw the demand back on you and say, well, you need to live for Christ. You need to do this and you need to do that. Mm, no, all the work is already done. Okay. Um, you don't have to try to keep yourself saved. You don't have to try to get yourself saved. Um, you just believe it and receive it. Like she said here, you know, or up top, you know, believe it, receive it and rest in it. Quit listening to these pulpit puppets that I'm not saying all of them, I'm just saying the majority of them, 99.9%, uh, that want to put the demand back on you because there is no demand on you. It is finished. Again, he did not say that for his own health. Okay. It is finished. He said that for the sake of the church and, you know, to come when he was there. It was like, this is it. I've done everything for you. Now just rest in me. Believe and rest. You know, um, let me take care of the rest. And again, you know, the joy of the Lord is our strength. And the joy of the Lord is also our, um, is, it's how we enjoy Christ by knowing who we are in him. And that brings joy, comfort, peace, love to overflow to others. And it's just us speaking the truths of Christ. It's not trying to be all spiritual and religious and everything like that, you know, cause that's just all crap. Um, it's sharing the, 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 again, the comforts and the joy, the peace, the love, it's all the attributes of, of the spirit that flow when and flow over, um, when we continue to speak of him so positively and as life for others. Some of us don't know how to speak that very well, but, you know, he does the rest. But it's still a joy and a, and, and a, uh, a comfort to share um, those um, truths with other people, you know. Uh, so, yeah, it's, it's just, it's not, there's no burden left on us at all. He has done it all. And knowing our position in Christ, which is, you know, basically just our identity, knowing who, uh, knowing who we are in him and renewing our minds every day, entering his rest every day. Um, you know, no matter what situation we're in, our, our conditions may change, but our position will never change. Amen. Okay. Um, let's see. Where were we? Um, okay. Uh, if you begin to read the Bible... I forgot where I was, y'all. <laughs> oh, here's an example. Okay, yeah. Um, here's a, a scripture for example that is often used to place performance demands on the believer by people who handle the word of God by the letter and not the spirit. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death and like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father... Even so, we also should walk in newness of life. Romans 6, 4. Amen. Now, 
I think a lot of people, you know, who do read it as a letter, because I know I did this, um, look at that word should. And so it makes it sound like it's a demand on you. Okay. No, it's, it's, it's basically saying that this is our, uh, uh, what's what I'm looking for? Um, this is our privilege, you know, that as sons and heirs of God, we, um, we are able to walk in newness of life, but it's not through our works. It's through his works and it's through his life-giving spirit. It's through his, you know, resurrect, uh, we are resurrected through him. Our life is new in him, but it's his, it's through his spirit. It's not through our flesh. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, so again, the demand, uh, we should walk newness of life. You can either read that as letter, which is the law, or you read and understand uh, it as spirit, gospel truth, the doctrine of Christ, and be washed and renewed by it. So whenever you're reading the Bible, read it as an heir. Don't read it as a slave because you are no longer a slave. If you remember Romans 8, okay, um, I don't remember the verse, but read Romans 8. <laughs> Um, where it talks about, you know, how we are no, we are no longer slaves, um, but heirs, um, heirs with Christ or through Christ, you know, heirs of God through Christ. And it also, uh, goes into that as well as in, in Romans five. I mean, th these are basics, but these are important basics because they, whenever we try to, uh, do something in our own effort, we need to come back to those basics. That's our foundation. You know, the gospel, the riches of the gospel are our, are our foundation, um, which is just basically a faith, you know, um, faith alone and resting in our position in Christ, knowing our identity in Christ. And that it, it, it sounds so simple. And that's what it, it is. It's so simple. You know, again, believe it, receive it, rest in it. Because that's what he wants. He doesn't want us to, like I said yesterday, uh, you know, throw our backpacks on and, and go into the mine and, and dig for gold, you know, to store up. Um, no, it's not about that. It's not about that at all. Um, yeah, anyway. The demand, we should, oh, oh I already read that. Um, let's see. Okay, what, uh, what it doesn't mean. I should do, try to, try to do better at living like a Christian should. Man, I really stink at this. God is probably disappointed in me. What it does mean, I died with Christ. My old man was judged and all sin was atoned for, removed, never to be mentioned again. Because Christ is risen. I am also risen with him. And he is now supplying me with life. Amen. Love that. And to walk in that newness of life is to realize that I am qualified, accepted in the beloved, joined with him as one spirit, fully in his presence, beyond the veil at all times because of his merits alone. There, or excuse me, merits his, his merits alone that he has freely imputed to me. And there is nothing I can do in this flesh that would disqualify me from that ever present flow of life and living water. Amen. Newness of life uh, versus the oldness of the letter is letting the gospel renew your mind to this truth day by day, moment by moment, refusing to let the lies and accusations of the enemy take a foothold in your mind and condemn you. Amen. I love that. Absolutely love that. And then uh, uh, Romans uh, 7, 6. But now we have been delivered from the law, having died to what we were held by, so that we should serve in the newness of the spirit and not in the oldness of the letter. Romans 7, 6. I don't know what version that is, but look it up, you know, and it, it just basically explains that, you know, um, we have no demand on us. And... When we read his word, we seriously need to look at our uh, look at the pages and see Christ 
because we are in Christ and Christ is in us. And therefore, it is a blessing to see ourselves through his eyes when reading his word um, as heirs, as sons, you know, uh, uh, through sonship. Um, we don't have to fear. We don't have to be ashamed. We don't have to be condemned because we were crucified with Christ. And the life we now live, we live through the faith of the Son of God who loved us and gave himself for us. Okay? Um, we died to the law so that we can live unto God. How do we do that? Faith to faith. Every day, just faith to faith. No demand, no burdens, just simple faith to faith. And remembering that the blood speaks for all of us. So there's no demand on us because the blood is taking care of all of it. Amen. So I hope that bless you. And um, yeah, when you read the Bible, remember, put your armor on. Uh, as David says, you know, put your armor on and know who you are in Christ so that the enemy cannot uh, try and fool you and say, oh, you know, this is an ordinance you have to follow or this is such and such, you know. Um, and remember to divide the word uh, correctly, like it says in Timothy. I don't know where exactly, but, um, you know, so you're not you're not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, you know. Or the power of God. Um, uh, well, I don't remember how the verse goes, but I think Romans one sixteen. Let's see, for I am, for I'm not, not afraid of, or not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation um, to all those who believe, the Jew first and also to the Greek. And then I can never remember the rest of it, but it, the rest of it is also very important. Also, you know, just. Um, understanding and uh yeah we just rest rest in knowing that everything has been accomplished and we just enjoy him and stop making it so stinking hard to think that the christian life is um we need to stop thinking that, uh, you know, uh, thinking that the Christian life is so hard to live because it's really not, you know, it's just faith to faith and whatever happens, happens for a reason. And there's always a reason for it to happen because everything that happens in our life is not by chance, not by, you know, um, uh, it's all by design. It's everything is in its place because it's already been done. If that makes sense. He's already lived our lives with us. He's lived his life with us. I, that, that's still, again, every time I think about that, it blows me away. But yet it also gives me so much peace because I know that whatever comes in my life or in, you know, in our lives in general, um, but separately, you know, it is always for our good and it is always a lesson that the Lord wants to show us and bring us closer to him and understanding more of him. So when you think about that, it brings you comfort and peace knowing that whatever comes your way, whether it's, you know, good or bad from what it looks like, God always has a plan. And he already knows what the end of that plan is going to look like. And if you want to say job, fine. Our job is, you know, and I'm saying that in, in parentheses, you know, is to just believe and trust him 100%. You know, um, 
yeah, just rest. Whatever it is, God's got it. So anyway, I pray that bless you and uh, talk to you later.